Greetings! It's Maxo Diddley. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make your custom shaders in Unity work with UI masks. Let's get right into it. So, I have got a UI mask, and the mask uses a picture of Mario. And I've got an image as a child of the mask, and as you can see, the mask is working as expected. And I've got another UI image called Mario. And he's got a Mario material on him. And this Mario material uses a colour swap shader that I made. If you want to know how this colour swap shader works, click the eye up in the corner. There's a tutorial on how to make it. However, you don't need to watch it for this tutorial. As this will work with any shader. And if we make Mario a child of our UI mask, as you can see... He's not following the rules of a mask. You can see him when he's outside of the mask. And when he's in the mask, he goes behind it. And this is not what we want. So I'm going to show you how you can make your shader work with a UI mask. All of the code will also be in the description below so you can copy and paste it. So the first step is you need to open up the shader. And you need to go to the top of the shader. And in the properties section of your shader, we want to add in a bunch of stencil properties. So this will be in the description below for you to copy and paste to make this quicker. And you want to do the following values in the properties. So the stencil reference, the stencil comparison, the stencil operation, the stencil read mask, the stencil write mask, and the color mask. All of these are floats. And I recommend you use the values that you see on screen for them. And I'm going to quickly explain what each one does. So the first one, the stencil reference. This sets the number the mask uses to decide where a shader can draw. We use zero because it matches the mask's default value. The stencil comparison checks if the mask's value matches the reference. Eight means equal, so it only draws in allowed areas. Stencil operation decides what happens to the mask's value if drawing is allowed. And zero means keep, so the mask isn't changed. Stencil read mask controls how much of the mask is checked. And we use 255 to check everything. Stencil write mask controls how much of the mask can be changed. We're going to use 255 so nothing gets skipped. And the color mask sets which part of the color the shader can change. We use 15 to allow all parts. So the next step is we want to go into the subshader section of our shader and we want to give the shader a tag. If your shader currently doesn't have any tags, still follow along because you're going to need this tag in the shader. So my shader already has the transparent render type tag, but we are going to give it another one. We're going to do Q equals transparent. So this will be in the description below for you to copy and paste. Your shader may not need render type transparent, but it does need Q equals transparent. And the Q equals transparent tag makes sure the shader is drawn after opaque objects, but in the correct order for transparency, which is needed for the UI mask to properly hide or show parts of the sprite. And there's one more thing you need to do. At the top, of the pass section of the subshader, you want to do a tiny bit of code. You want to do the following here, which will also be in the description below for you to copy and paste. And this stencil and color mask section tells the shader to follow the rules of the UI masking system, only drawing where the mask says it's allowed, and writing colors correctly to keep everything visible. And we're literally just passing in the properties that we defined up here. And after you do that, you need to save your work. And that's all you need to do for the shader. So if we go back into Unity, you're going to notice Luigi is now on top of Mario. Even though we've called him Mario and he's just got a green color swap, it now appears he's following the rules of the mask. And if we move him about, he functions just like how a regular UI image would when they're a child of a mask on a canvas. And we'll also just move the image again just to show it. And if we press play, it also works. And if we move him during runtime, the same thing happens. 
So, thanks for being the great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. And subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.